Halo 3 is the most highly anticipated video game of all time, and with good reason. Bungie Studios really raised the stakes with Halo 1 and Halo 2, and a lot of people have been wondering how they're going to fare on the next generation and whether or not they're going to be able to deliver on all of the promises they've made. Well guess what? They do deliver. Halo 3 is friggin' awesome. Veteran players of Halo are going to notice a few things right off the bat when they start playing Halo 3. Bungie decided to create a game that would service both casual fans and their hardcore fans who have really become experts at Halo, and to that end, they've made normal and easy mode actually easier than they've ever been, and heroic and legendary are slightly more difficult when you're playing alone. So if you've beaten the first two Halo games and you start on normal, you're going to miss out on a lot of stuff. There won't be turret place in certain areas, there won't be a lot of troop reinforcements, the AI is going to be a lot more dumbed down than it usually would be, and uh, the enemies aren't going to use as much equipment either, and equipment is one of the cool new uh, things that they've added this year, and it's really great to see those enemies on heroic and legendary level actually throwing down like a bubble shield to protect themselves, um, or using a flare to blind you. As you know, Master Chief is pretty proficient with beating the crap out of people with his fist, but really he's a lot better with a gun, and while we still have a lot of the old favorites coming back, there are a few cool weapons that have been added. Uh, we've got the Spartan Laser, which uh, basically zooms in and fires this laser that destroys anything, vehicles, whatever it hits. You've got a flamethrower, yes, finally Halo has a flamethrower, and it's got a really cool look and effect, and guys will actually catch on fire. There are also a couple of new grenades that you'll get to fool around with. Uh, there's a spike grenade, which can stick anywhere, and then it shoots out spikes everywhere, does a lot of damage. Dual wielding, which was added for Halo 2, is back again in Halo 3, but it's a lot less prominent, and that's because the battle rifle is actually the most efficient weapon in the game, and that's of course something that you can't dual wield. One of the other big improvements is actually to the energy swords, which in Halo 2 the whole idea was just to lock onto a guy and you just instant kill. Well now there's a little bit more depth to it, where if two guys swing their swords at the same time, they'll actually clash swords and both be stunned for a moment. So you get into these battles where guys are just hitting swords again and again trying to get at each other, and it, it almost becomes elegant, it's like swashbuckling in the Halo universe. Now the Spartan laser, flamethrower, firebombs, those are all going to be cool, but the weapon that's really going to catch on and grab your attention is going to be the gravity hammer. And this bad boy is sort of like having Babe Ruth's bat in your hand. And you just can knock guys, swat them all over the place. You can even swat vehicles, knock over warthogs, send mongooses flying. It's a whole lot of fun. Anyone who played the Halo 3 beta or watched any of its coverage knows that one of the things that Bungie added was the use for the X button, which now actually deploys equipment. The most common you're going to see on heroic and legendary difficulties in campaign is the bubble shield, which is really useful, a lot more maybe for enemies than it is for you. Uh, you're also going to see deployable cover, which is, you know, the standard cover that we've seen the Covenant use since Halo 1, but now you can actually choose where to set it up. You're likely not going to use the equipment very much in the single player campaign, but you're going to need it a lot in the multiplayer. In fact, the equipment seems built for the multiplayer game and adds quite a lot to the experience. For all this cool equipment and awesome weaponry, Master Chief needs a sweet ride. All your old favorites are back, but the cool new addition is the Brute Chopper. And you're going to love the Brute Chopper because this thing tears everything else up. It's probably the best vehicle in the entire game. The real meat of Halo 3 is the multiplayer. In fact, the campaign is sort of a side attraction compared to the depth that you're going to get playing with other people online. So there are 11 maps this time in Halo 3. And they're all actually pretty good. Uh, there's Sand Trap, which is this really cool big open desert map where you're actually going to get a ride in these elephants, which are just giant troop carriers. There's Isolation, which is a nice two-tone map where on the top it's all grassy and serene, and down below it's gritty and dirty tunnels with these bunkers that have these little gun slots that if you're really talented you can throw a grenade through. And there are several maps that are going to be awesome simply because they feature the man cannon. Those are maps such as... Uh, Valhalla and Narrows. The matchmaking features that Bungie had implemented for Halo 2 are pretty much the same stuff that you're going to see in Halo 3. They worked pretty well, but there are uh, more varieties to the game modes, and one of the modes that they've added is called Infection, which I think people are just going to have a blast with. The real customization is going to come with the Forge, which is just this awesome in-depth level editor. You can go into any of the 11 maps that are already in Halo, and change them around so you can turn into a monitor which is you know what Guilty Sparks is fly around pick up any object in the environment move it where you like remove it from the game and then you have a buy system that sort of works like Counter-Strike 
At the same time though, you can actually have battles going on in the forge so that you have people messing around with the forge all the time so that as one guy's shooting you, another guy turns into the monitor and he just drops a mongoose down so the guy can hop in it and get away quickly. Or if you're playing with your buddy, he can be like, hey, rocket launcher. You can just buy the rocket launcher, drop it in front of him, he picks it up, and you're fighting uh, in tandem. You might have noticed while watching this video review that we've been able to detach the camera from Master Chief's first person view, swing it around, pause the game, look at these awesome explosions, and really show just the beauty of the special effects that are in Halo 3 and just the amount of detail in the environments. The thing is, you can do this too with the replay editor. The replay editor automatically saves any time you play a game, whether you're playing campaign, co-op, multiplayer, it's going to save that as a temporary file, and these files are only a few megabytes big because it's just 3D game data that basically is being reproduced when you do the replay. Then you can record your camera movements and actually create your own cinematic clips which you can upload for other people to view, and while they can watch what you've done, they can also just stop at any time and, you know, press the Y button, detach the camera, and go do what they like and see what they want to see. After listening to all the wonderful things that Halo 3 has to offer, you may be wondering why this game doesn't score a perfect 10. And unfortunately I hate to break it to you, but the main reason why this game is not a perfect 10 is because of the campaign mode. Though they fixed some of the problems with backtracking, Bungie still has a lot of moments where you're going to be going back through levels for no real reason. Also, the AI of your teammates just isn't that great. When you're playing single player, you'll have the Arbiter often as your co-op buddy just sort of being run by the AI. He's an astard. He'll just be staring at walls sometimes. He won't shoot. He dies a lot. I'll tell you what, those Covenant guys, they like to get shot in the face quite often. He'll be dead most of the time. He's really pretty much useless, and there's no point in having an AI controlled character with an arrow over him letting you know he's your AI buddy unless he's actually going to be competent. This is like playing with your four year old sister who's blind. My other issue is actually with the story. Yes, you do finish the fight, and yes, you really get to feel like Master Chief is saving the day once again. But Bungie actually raised a lot of interesting points and some interesting issues with the Elite and sort of that religious battle that was going on within them, and that's completely abandoned. While I don't want to be playing as the Arbiter through half the game, at the same time, I don't want that storyline to be completely dropped, and it really feels like that's what's happened. But what it really boils down to is just that the campaign isn't as fun as it was in Halo 1. And that's the ultimate thing. You want the game to be just as fun as it always was. It's a real joy to play with four players online. That's a blast. Even if it's really easy, it's just great to be with your buddies playing the game because Halo's always been about the community and being with your friends and having a beer. But at the same time, I still want that challenge in single player and that satisfaction. I want every level to be great. And the second to last level in Halo 3 is terrible. And everybody who's played it that I know of has said, yeah, this level is bad. And I have a feeling even the people at Bungie know that they're going to get a lot of flack for that level. And that's not acceptable. When you only have nine levels and one of them's not good, that's bad game design. And ultimately, that's one of the things that holds Halo back from being a perfect 10. Everything else is incredible. I mean, really, if you take out the campaign, this game is an 11 out of 10. Uh, the Forge is really fantastic. The replay editor is just incredible. You can literally just sit around watching replays all day long and never even bother playing the game anymore. You know, we spent enough time talking about Halo 3. It's about time you just went out and finished the fight. Buy it now. If you own a 360, you should get Halo 3. And if you don't own a 360, buy a 360 and buy Halo 3.